Well, good morning, everyone. It's a great day to be in the Lord's house. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. Let's sing a great song. Come into His presence. Let's sing together. Everybody, come into His presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give Him praise. And give Him praise. Come into His presence with thanksgiving in your heart. Your voice is raised. Your voice is raised. sing it out and come to his presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give him praise and give him praise come to his presence with thanksgiving in your heart your voice is raised your voice is raised Somebody say amen this morning. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Thank you. So good to see you with us this morning. A uh, number of uh, announcements that are in front of you in the foundation. I just want to uh, bring a couple to your attention. Uh, this Saturday afternoon at noon, we are having a Valentine's banquet. There's not a sign up sheet for this. Uh, and this is kind of an extra uh, curricular activity. It was not in our bu uh, budget or anything, so we're going to have a little basket that you can help contribute to offset the cost uh, of that banquet if you would. But I just want, it's for everybody. Uh, if you love the Lord, and I think that's most of you, and if you have a loved one to share it with, that's fine. If not, you have a church family to share your love of the Lord with uh, Saturday at 12 o'clock. Uh, also notice that the church conference has been changed from our, the traditional time to have a, a meal right after church service next Sunday. And then after that meal is over, come in to do business. And there are some things we need to discuss and talk about. So I encourage you to, to, to plan on doing that, to plan on staying for a, a meal. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet for what you can bring uh, to help uh, the hospitality com committee out for next week. Since that's our first business meeting of the year, I need end year reports from, actually fourth quarter reports from all committee chairpersons. I have a number already in my hands. If you've not done one, uh, please get it to me uh, and so I can get printed this week with our church secretary. Uh, one, one announcement that's not in here that was brought to my attention this week, uh, it, it this is from Diane Rice. It says, We are planning to bring our portable sewing machines to the church this Thursday, February 7th, from 12 to 2. We will have a class in making fleece hats. Our plans are to have a bunch of them for Samaritan's Purse come this coming fall. And for other donated purposes you may have in mind. Sewing skills requirements are minimal. It's very small supplies list available uh, in the lobby. Any questions, see Diane Rice or Marilyn Wynn. Uh, and they called to see if they could do that at the church on Thursday because uh, a couple of the ladies in the church were talking about doing it. And I said, absolutely. That was not printed. Also in your hands today is the first edition of the Cornerstone Chronicle. I asked Brother Steve to start working on something like this. Uh, six months ago or so, I wanted to start the new year with uh, a newsletter, with uh, my newsletter and his to the church family, something for the kids, uh, the calendar for the year, uh, other th upcoming ministry items, birthdays. By the way, if you have a February birthday and it's not on here, let me know. I'm, we're not leaving you out on purpose. It's just that we don't have record of it. I think you're born if you're here, but, uh, that, that was, but, but anyhow... Uh, 
Uh, and there are a couple errors in here. Number one, my letter was written before we changed the times of uh, the church conference. And uh, since I wrote the letter, I knew it was fine, so I didn't reread it. But I missed it and not changed it. Uh, so you can blame the proofreader for the errors. But for our first edition, uh, very lovely. I, I, I wanted a hard copy for our church family. So you can put it on your refrigerator or something and you can remind yourself of what events are coming up. Uh, so often something happens and somebody says, I never knew we were going to do that. Or nobody told me. Well, you get one of these things. Uh, now, if it comes to me on the internet, I look at it, erase it, and don't remember it. But with a hard copy, you can put it on your refrigerator with a magnet, you can look at it on a regular basis. Um, any suggestions how we can improve this or things we can put in it, let us know. Uh, as I said, this was the first edition. I'm very happy with it, other than my mistakes. But uh, for the end, help us to grow as a church family. Again, we're delighted you chose to be with us. Uh, this morning, I don't see anybody that is not considered a, a, a permanent fixture here. We're glad you chose to, to be with us today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, I just say thank you for the privilege and that we have to come together in your name. That we have this time to, to worship, time to open our mouths and praise you. To, in one way or another, just to say how great of a God we serve. And that we say thank you for your grace and your hand in our lives. Lord, continually remind us how dependent we are upon you. We just come back to you well, over and over again saying thank you. Visit us in a unique way today. Speak to our hearts uh, through songs. Speak to us when your word is open today. Help us to see the truth of what you're saying today to make it our own. Help us to know how to honor you and praise you in every step of our lives. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Good morning. How are we today? Okay, we're just... We're just okay, you go hold my, okay, you hold my seat? Okay, thank you. I, Okay, cool, cool. Well, looky here. Another blessing walking in the door. All right. So I hope everybody is well today. Come on, Grayson. Come on. You want to sit right here? Here. Oh, keep them coming. I'm looking out the door now. Come on, keep them. This <laughs> is beautiful to see this. It just keeps getting, you know, fuller and fuller. We just need to continue to pray for our children's ministry and just watch it grow and grow and grow and grow until we're bursting out of the seams. But, um, but guys, I have a question for you. Where are you today? In South Carolina? Excellent, excellent answer. Excellent, that's right. Well, where else are you? South Carolina. South Carolina, yes, gotcha girl. Where else? In church, that's right, we're in church. Did you know that we're at Jesus' house? That's right, excellent. Did you all know that you are the church? <laughs> Should have had a V8. That's right, you are the church. So I'm going to read something and I'm going to have you guys repeat after me. Okay, are you ready? Okay. I am part of God's church. Yes, I am. I can learn about Jesus and live for him. I can give my money to help others too. I am part of God's church. How about you? Okay, now I got, got a little bit more. You ready? Thank you, God, for my church. Thank you for my church. I love my church. And my church loves me. Thank you, God, for my church. So do you understand what I'm saying when you are the church? It doesn't mean that you're the doors or the walls or the windows. It's the people inside the building that make up the church. 
we all have one goal and that's to work together to spread the news of Jesus Christ, right? So that makes you part of the church. It makes everyone out here part of the church. It's not just the building and the walls. It's the people inside. Can the walls talk? No. If they do, I'm gone. Okay? If they do, they start talking, I'm gone. Okay? You'd be running with me, right? Oh, hello, doors. But you know what? The poem that we just read, we need to thank God for our church. We need to thank God for our building, and we need to thank God for the lights and the heat and air. But you want to know something? We need to thank him for the people who make up the church. Our pastor, musicians, people that work in the back, the people filling the pews, the people that clean inside the church, or even make sure the yards outside look wonderful. Because that's what makes up the church. So I'm going to give you a little verse, okay? So I told you those inside the church should go out and be the church. That doesn't just mean that we stay here inside this lovely, beautiful building. As a church... We are to share God's word. So that means we have to reach beyond the doors and the walls and the windows, right? That means that we have to reach out and talk to others and smile at them and let them know, oh, there's something special about you because you have Jesus in your life and you want them to have that special gift as well. So the Bible verse today comes from Acts 11.20. They began telling them about the Lord Jesus. Okay, I need some help. Who's going to say it with me again? We need to do it again. Help me say it. Here we go. They, they began, began telling, telling them, them about, about the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus. Acts, Acts chapter 11, 11. verse 20. Is that right? Acts? That's right. That's right. It's a book in the Bible. That's right. So guys, remember, even when you're not inside the church, you are still the church. Even when you're at school, in Walmart, Hobby Lobby, okay, Chick-fil-A, mmm, you are the church. So everything that you say and that you do should always represent Christ, Okay? So let's bow our heads and let's pray. Lord, we thank you for our church. We thank you again for the heat. We thank you for the lights. We thank you for the literature that you provide so that we can study your word and, and just take it in and want to become more like you, Lord. And Lord, I just ask that take our church, just guide us as the church, as your church, to be all that we can be for you out in the streets, out wherever we are, Lord. Just let us be an example of you and our church. We love you and we praise you. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. Uh, here's a new song for you. It's not really new, but it's one that we haven't done here before. It's called I Will Celebrate. So let's stand together and sing this. sing that again. I will celebrate, sing unto the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song. I will celebrate, sing unto the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song. With my heart rejoicing within, with my See to the 
the Lord a new song. I will celebrate, sing unto the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song. Like that one? Amen. It's a great song. We should celebrate the love of Jesus. Amen. Here's one a little more familiar. It's called All Hail King Jesus. All Hail King Jesus. That's why we're here. We want to come today so that we can worship you and uplift your name. 
and just be a part of something special today here at Cornerstone. So we ask, Father, that you move. We just ask, Father, that your Holy Spirit fills this place. So, Father, that we can worship you. We thank you, and we just love you with everything that we have. And we just give it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be... First of all, good morning. Good morning. And second of all, this is a time in our service that we've started to dedicate to intercessory prayer and we also pray for our offering and for the ushers that will take it up. I thought it was kind of unique this morning that uh, the children's message as such dealt with us being the church and speaking of the church because we are the church. Christ lives inside of each of us. And the reason it came and struck a nerve a little bit is I was listening to a, a message this morning and it dealt with the book of James. And it was dealing with the power of the tongue. And we all know how bad this thing can be. But we also know that a lot of people that we come in contact with that are lost, the only thing that they see in the way of a Bible is who you are how you carry yourself in character and what you say. A picture and a word may be all they ever see of a Bible. And I think it's something that we all need to take to heart and remember. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with humble hearts full of thankfulness and praise for the blessing of this day, the blessing of this place, the blessing of these young people who have come into your house to be taught your word and to grow in your ways, Lord. Father, so often we enter a world full of anger, jealousy, greed, and strife. And many times, even as your children, we're unprepared to think before we act. Your word tells us that we should be quick to listen and slow to speak. And I think that's good advice from your word, Lord, because it teaches us to hear people where they are, to find out what they're about, the problems that they face in their lives, so that we can offer a word of encouragement not condemnation to offer a word of love peace and joy not ridicule and criticism or anger we are human Lord and we fall and we fail you often more than we like Father help us to be strengthened help us to learn to quickly listen and be slow to speak as the old saying goes, Lord, that's why you gave us two ears and only one mouth. To listen twice as much. And Father, we know that there are many that we need to pray for this morning. We have many on our prayer list. We have many that come together on Wednesday nights to pray for specific needs of those in our church family and those that they come in contact with that they know need a healing touch. But Father, they also need a spiritual touch. They need the saving knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ. And Father, we know that prayer is a gift that you gave us, a privilege that you gave us, that we can solve many of our problems by lifting them up to you. In fact, we can solve all of our problems because you want to take them from us. You don't want us to bear those burdens. And you don't want us to bear the burdens of so many that we come in contact with. But then when we say we will pray for you to do that, to pray for that person right then and there, to lift their needs up to you that you might hear those prayers 
and answer them. Father, we have many that in our church family that are dealing with physical illnesses and strife and stress. And we have those, I know, that enter our church doors every Sunday that have spiritual needs as well, Lord. Each one here may have a burden on their heart for someone that only they know about. Father, I pray that at this time they are lifting that concern up to you. That you might hear it and that you would answer. And that you would bring comfort and peace to their lives as they know in their hearts that you have answered that prayer. That nothing has gotten past you and that all will be as you will. And Father, now we also wish to pray for our offering, our tithes and our offerings. Father, we know that you don't need the money that we give you. But we know that your church here on earth does need it. There are many needs within our church family, missions around the world where people are trying to reach a lost and hurting world with the saving knowledge of your son Jesus Christ. So Father, we ask that you would bless our tithes and offerings this morning. Not only for the enlargement of your kingdom, but for the healing, the spiritual healing of so many. That they would come to the saving knowledge of your son Jesus Christ. That heaven would be bursting at the seams when we all go home. Father, we ask that you would bless both the gift and the giver. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
let's stand together. Here's a great old hymn when the roll is called up yonder. Let's sing this together. Everybody, here we go. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, in time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the Savior of earth shall gather over on the other shore. And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise. The glory of his resurrection share when his chosen ones shall gather to their homes beyond the skies and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there sing it out when the Let's take some time in fellowship. One with another, go shake somebody's hand. Let them know you love.
this morning. He's worthy. Amen. And you may be seated. Uh, this morning we have a special, special treat for you. And uh, this is something that we tried to get done actually uh, the first Sunday of January. So it's been about four weeks, about a month since we were able to get this done. Uh, Abby got sick and wasn't able to be here, but we're excited for her today. She's going to come and sing a wonderful, wonderful song called You Say. And uh, listen to this. If you're familiar with contemporary uh, Christian radio, you'll recognize a lady by the name of Lauren Daigle. And uh, Lauren sings a lot of Christian songs. She's done some crossover work. And uh, a very, very talented young lady who's put out some really good stuff. Uh, so for Abby to, at, uh, at, at four years old, to be able to come and sing this song, is, is just phenomenal. And there's really nothing that I can say that's going to prepare you for what you're about to hear. So you just need to understand that this is a very talented young lady uh, who already knows a lot about pitch. She already knows a lot about timing. And uh, that just tells me that, uh, that God has given her something very, very special. So y'all give her a, a hand clap of encouragement as she comes. And uh, she's going to come and sing You Say. Abby, come on, sweetheart.
ladies and gentlemen, Miss Abby Grace Wallace. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. You did wonderful. You left.